This six piece turning set gives you the basic tools to use when starting out and they will serve you well throughout your wood turning journey. It is usually recommended that you learn how to use these tools before going on to more specialised tools such as hollowing and decorating tools. Before embarking on any wood turning project, please read and understand the instructions that came with your tools and wear all appropriate safety equipment. The lathe should be at a height to suit you. As a guide, the spindle should be at your elbow height. The tool rest is very important as it is used to rest the tools whilst cutting the wood. The height will depend on the type and size of tool being used. Before starting the lathe, the tool rest should be positioned as close as possible to the workpiece. Rotate the wood by hand to ensure that it clears the tool rest. A spindle project can be a machined square section branch wood or log, where the grain runs through the length of the piece of wood, along the bed of the lathe. These projects can include boxes, pens, goblets, pepper mills and lamps. A bowl or faceplate project is usually from prepared blanks where the grain runs through the wood from side to side, so it is at 90 degrees to the lathe bed. These projects include bowl, platters and clocks. As with all Robert Sorby tools, this set comes sharp and ready to use straight out of the box. Let's give you a brief guide on wood turning tools. The majority of wood turning tools come under two general categories. The first one is cutting tools. These are mostly used for waste material removal but can also be used for detail as well as creating a smooth finish. A cutting tool uses a bevel to hold the cutting edge in place. It consists of a shaft, heel, bevel and cutting edge. To ensure the bevel is in full contact with the wood so you can guide the cutting edge Follow these simple procedures. Hold the handle low so the heel touches the wood. Now start slowly, lift the handle to allow the bevel to rub on the wood. When a very fine dust shows on the cutting edge, it indicates that the whole of the bevel is touching or rubbing on the wood and the cutting edge is working correctly. Now stop lifting the handle and turn the tool into the direction that you are going to cut. Maintain bevel contact to ensure that you are in control of the cutting edge during the cut. The second general category are scraping tools, or just scrapers as they are more commonly known. These are mostly used for refining the surface finish, but many can also be used for rapid waste material removal. A scraping tool only has the cutting edge touching the surface of the wood. It consists of a shaft, clearance face and cutting edge. The scraper works in a much simpler way to the cutting tool in that you have the tool either horizontal or in a slight downward angle and slowly allow the cutting edge to gently touch the surface of the wood. Pass the tool across the wood to refine the surface finish. We'll now show you each of the tools in this set how to use them and, equally important, how to sharpen and look after them. As its name implies, the spindle roughing gout is only used to rough spindle projects. As this tool is a cutting tool, it is used with the bevel rubbing. Push the tool to the left or to the right. Note this is cutting downhill, large to smaller diameter. Never go uphill, small to large diameter. It can also be used to create large beads and coves on a spindle. Remember, always cut downhill. Don't try to roll a bead or form a cove in one pass. It should never be used to rough down bowl or faceplate projects, where the grain is at 90 degrees to the lathe bed. 
The tool is sharpened at a 45 degree bevel angle straight across the end of the blade. When using a Robert Sorby Pro Edge or a bench grinder, first set the tool platform to 45 degrees. Using a gouge jig, if available, present one wing to the abrasive. Remove the tool and present the other wing, and then roll across to the first wing. If a gouge jig is not available, set the tool directly on the platform and follow the same procedure. The skew chisel is used for planing a spindle project smooth. To create beads, V cuts and decorative lines. It should not be used on a bowl or faceplate project. Position the tool rest close to the workpiece at a height to suit you. A good guide when planing is to set the rest so that the tool is cutting around 10 pm, just above centre. When rolling a bead, use the tool with the short point down and roll each side in turn. For a V-cut or decorative line, use the tool with the long point down. The tool is sharpened with two 15 degree bevels and a skew angle of 20 degrees. To sharpen a skew on a pro edge or bench grinder, set the tool platform to 15 degrees. If you have a skew guide, place the tool against the guide and press the tool in the centre so it doesn't wobble. Push the tool in to sharpen one side. Repeat this process for the second side. If you don't have a skew guide, then line the cutting edge of the tool with the platform and then push the tool upwards. The spindle gouge is used primarily for forming shapes on a spindle project, such as beads and coves. To form a bead, it is easier to clear some wood from either side. Mark out a bead, mark a centre line on the bead. You should still be able to see this when the bead is finished. Using a parting tool, form a recess either side of the bead. Don't try and form the complete bead in one pass. With the spindle gouge, start to one side of the line and roll the tool, slightly lifting the handle. On the other side, repeat this process until the bead is formed. To form a cove, you will do the opposite of rolling a bead. It is formed in two stages. From left to right, cut into the wood stopping at the bottom. Reposition and repeat from the right hand side. Again stopping at the bottom. Remember the golden rule, always cut downhill. The spindle gouge is supplied with a 45 degree angle and has a rounded shape. To sharpen on a pro edge or bench grinder, set the tool platform at 45 degrees. With the standard gouge jig in place, set the tool in with one wing against the abrasive and in a smooth motion, roll the tool around and stop at the other wing. If you don't have a gouge jig, hold the tool straight on the platform. Roll the tool from one wing to the other. The parting tool is used mainly to part spindle projects from the waste material. Set the tool rest and present the tool with the handle down. Push the tool towards the wood so that the bevel rubs. Lift the handle so the tool starts to cut. It is important that you do two things. First, go in a little. Withdraw the tool and widen the cut. This should prevent the tool binding in the wood. Second, as you part in, Lift the tool handle so that the point of the tool is heading towards the centre of the wood. Part in as far as you are confident, stop the lathe and either finish with a fine saw or break away if the spindle is small enough. 
The parting tool can also be used to mark out beads and to roll small beads. The action is the same as using a spindle gouge. To sharpen the parting tool, set the platform on the pro edge or bench grinder at 20 degrees. Push the tool into the abrasive. Withdraw and repeat on the other bevel. The bowl gouge is used to shape bowl or faceplate projects where the grain runs at 90 degrees to the lathe bed. To round a bowl blank, position the tool on the rest. Bring the bevel onto the wood and push the tool into the cut. Move the tool sideways. With a little practice you will find that having the tool on its side with the flute facing the direction of the cut will make this a lot easier. Remember, with either cut, keep the bevel rubbing on the wood. To shape the bottom of a bowl, start with the bevel rubbing and the tool on its side, with the flute facing the direction of the cut. Turning the inside of the bowl is very similar to the outside, as we must ensure that the bevel is in contact with the surface of the wood, whilst we steer the cutting edge in the direction we require. The bowl gouge is supplied with a 45 degree bevel, with the tool having a rounded shape similar to the spindle gouge. To sharpen the bowl gouge on a pro edge or bench grinder, set the platform to 45 degrees. Set the tool in the gouge jig with the tool on its side, push upwards and roll the tool to the other side. If a gouge jig is not available, just place the tool on the platform and follow the same procedure. The round nose scraper is used to clean up torn grain on the inside of a bowl project, clear tooling ridges and blend profiles. It is different from all of the other tools in that it is a scraper and not a bevel rubbing tool. To use, set the tool rest slightly above centre and present the tool with the handle up, so the tool is in a downward or trailing position. Push the tool into the wood with a light touch and move sideways. To sharpen on a pro edge or bench grinder, set the platform to 80 degrees. Place the tool on the platform and present one side to the abrasive and roll to the other side. This six piece turning set, together with all Robert Sorby products, are available from all main Robert Sorby stockists worldwide, a list of which can be found on our website. For more Robert Sorby product videos along with useful hints and tips, go to the Robert Sorby YouTube channel.